Well, folks, iOS 16 is finally here, and a lot of people are really excited for this one. I, for one, have been finding a ton of features that Apple didn't even tell us were in this update. And yeah, I know, the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro are definitely stealing the spotlight with all that new functionality, but if you're not upgrading this year, there's still a lot of new features coming your way. These were all really new to me, and I find them very useful, and hopefully they'll be new to you as well. So, without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first tip I've got for you guys has to do with screenshots. I know a lot of you are gonna relate to this when I say that it's super annoying when you wanna send your friend a screenshot from an article or something. So you take a screenshot, you send it to them, and then it's still in your camera roll, and you're like, I don't really want that. Well now in iOS 16, you don't need to worry about that because when you take a screenshot and you hit the done button, you'll see a new option for copy and delete. This will copy it to your clipboard, but not save it to your camera roll so you can put it into a message and send it and it doesn't get saved. I love that. Next up, we have another feature that has to do with your friends. You know when your friends come over and they're all pestering you for the Wi-Fi password and they go to connect and sometimes the option to share the Wi-Fi password pops up. That's been in iOS for a while, but you honestly just wish that you could see what the Wi-Fi password is and then copy it and send it to them. Well, now you can. If you click on the information button for your Wi-Fi network, you have the option to, with Face ID authentication, show the password and copy it and send it to your friends. Thank you. We've really needed that for a while now, but thanks. So next up, we have a feature that Apple actually did talk about, but now that I've actually used it, it's too good for me not to put in here because it's just amazing and I love how this works. Uh, so basically, there's a redesigned dictation mode. You'll see a larger microphone down at the bottom right of the screen. Now, what makes this particular implementation special is that it's able to recognize natural speech patterns in your voice. This means that it can add punctuation and even add emojis from spoken word. Fire emoji, 100 emoji, laughing cat face emoji. Let's see, did it get that one to work? Wow, it actually did, that's pretty impressive. And then did you see there when I paused and it went back and it fixed a whole bunch of errors? It added periods, it added commas. It didn't get the 100 emoji though, so it's not bulletproof. But the best part about all of this is that instead of graying out the keyboard like it did before, it's still there. So you can dictate and then you can add or correct stuff with the keyboard while it's still accepting dictation. This is much more powerful than it was in the past and honestly, it's amazing. I really, really love it. All right, so next up is really more of a quirk than a feature, but I think it's still cool nonetheless. If you have an iPhone pre-iOS 16, you've probably noticed that you have to hold it pretty upright in order to get Face ID to unlock. However, with iOS 16, that's not the case. Now, if you have a recent iPhone, starting with the 13 series, you can unlock Face ID while completely horizontal. Look at that. Now. Is that a super useful feature? Pfft, no, not really. But it does at least give you a wider range of usable situations for Face ID. So next up, we gotta talk about privacy. Privacy features are always one of Apple's favorites to talk about. They always have something new in the way of privacy. And this year, it's actually pretty interesting. You can now lock notes. And by the way, this also works with photo albums. So basically the way that this works is you can go into your settings, go down to the notes tab, and it'll allow you to set up a password for locking your notes. And that's not just the password to unlock your phone. So you can give someone access to unlock your phone without giving them access to your locked notes or photo albums. Now to use this feature, go into the Notes app on your phone, and if you long press on a note, you'll notice that you have the option to lock it. At that point, a little padlock will show up next to it, and then you can toggle your note between unlocked and locked. When you exit the Notes app, it'll relock the note, and when you try to access it again, it'll prompt you to put in Face ID. All right, so now let's talk about Maps. Maps has been getting a lot of updates as of late, and to be honest, some of them are pretty cool. But first, one that's completely unnecessary. 
So now when you search up a famous landmark, rather than showing you a little dot on a map, it'll actually zoom in and show you the 3D model. And in some cases, like for example, Apple's headquarters, of course, it actually has a new option called flyover, which will switch to the satellite view and use the gyroscope of the phone to give you a sort of AR view. And from there, you can even start a tour, which sort of goes into this weird automated camera that circles it. I don't know. It's a little bit weird, but it's kind of cool. The flyover, I guess, is kind of cool. It gives you like a drone's eye view of the landmark in 3D with actual satellite imagery. I don't know. I don't really see this as useful, but it's kind of cool. What's actually cool is multi-stop routing. Finally, this has come to Apple Maps. You can add multiple stops along the way for directions, and that applies to walking, driving, transit, spaceship travel, like it, thank you. This really should have been in Maps for a long time, but now that it is, I'm, th I'm, yes, thanks. You're late, but thanks. Speaking of being late, you know how Android phones since the very dawn of civilization have had haptic feedback when you type on the keyboard? Well, Apple finally got the memo and implemented that with iOS 16. If you go into your settings, sounds and haptics, you can finally turn that on. And because this is Apple, of course, the Taptic engine is probably one of the best vibration and haptic motors you've ever experienced. It's actually really nice. It's not like some of those Android phones where you type it and it's just like blah, 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 blah. It's actually like pretty good where you're, it's like bzz, 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 bzz. Do you like my reenactment? Is that helpful? Is that useful information? Now here's some other useful information. You know how in Safari, you got a whole bunch of tabs open and you're like, oh my God, there's so many tabs. I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. Well, of course you can rearrange those tabs. Great. But if you want to organize your tabs a little bit better, long press on a tab and a new option to pin it will show up. This is gonna shrink that tab down into a much smaller area, put it right up at the top and put it nice and out of the way. So if you have those tabs that you wanna keep open for like six months, as we all do, they can now hide up at the top and they don't take up as much space anymore. Good feature, good job, you did it. All right, here we go, the final feature. One of my new favorites is creating stickers super easily through photos. Now, obviously, this is gonna work best with photos that have the object fully visible and not cut off or obstructed in any way. But Apple has done a pretty good job here of training their systems to actually detect the edges of cohesive objects. I think this thing works pretty well and it's a lot easier than exporting your photos onto your Mac, going into preview or Photoshop, and then using object isolation over there to create a PNG. Now you can just do it on your phone with a single tap. You know what else you can do with a single tap? <laughs> yeah, like this video. And then I guess another single tap to subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful. As usual, let me know what your favorites or least favorites were in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video.